Heather in Dayton. Heather, thank you for calling the show. What's happening? Good morning, studio. Morning. 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 I just wanted to call and say thank you very much um, for being so positive and giving me something to look forward to this morning. Obviously, uh, there was nothing exciting or happy about yesterday, but I was all up night last night while getting ready for bed. I just kept thinking, I can't wait to just drive to work in the morning and listen to the Bobby Ball show and have everybody just put me in a good mood for the week. And that's exactly what you guys did. And that's what you do every morning. And I just want to say thank you so much. Oh, thanks. And you're in Dayton, huh? I am in Dayton, yeah. So basically everything, you know, yesterday that you could see or hear was nothing good. Um, Even trying to watch the CMA uh, fest, I... You know, we were getting break-ins with different things. So it was just nice to be able to turn on the radio this morning and just take a deep breath and, and laugh a little bit and smile a little bit, which you guys always do. Well, thanks. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. You're welcome. Let me say this, too. You can go over to bobbybones.com, and we have some shirts up there. And, um, you know, as you guys saw over the weekend, what had happened in El Paso and Dayton, um, what we're going to try to do as a show is help out the families of those that were affected. I did see the president call for uh, stricter background checks this morning, which I thought was pretty freaking cool. Yeah. Um, at the week, listen, this weekend was just tough to watch. Like around 30 people died. And for me, it's always weird because I had a bunch of like either blogs or magazines or news stations calling going, hey, make a statement on something. And I like to make most of my statements here with, like, our listeners because this is kind of the team here. It's like us in the room and the team here. Um, let me say this first of all. I, before I say anything, and I don't ever use this vehicle to get political, nor am I really here now. But I, before I say anything, I have to tell you, I do have guns. And so, you know, I can walk through my lifetime of owning everything from a 410 to a 22 to a 20-gauge to a 12-gauge to a 30 6 Like, I grew up with guns, which was never a toy for me, nor was it – you know, a symbol of wealth or strength. It was just, it was a tool that sometimes, a lot of times, we just use that tool to eat. And it was, you know, killing squirrels or killing deer and having food. And so, and where I come from, a, a small town in the South, like population 700, that, you know, you had a gun as a means, you know, to eat or you know, even to protect yourself. I think a lot of our listeners understand what I'm saying here. And I've never thought that people were trying to take away my guns. I never think that people will try to take away my guns. And I think that, you know, part of the thing is we hear the screamers on the cable shows or the internet and people start to freak out. I think I'm a responsible gun owner. I think if you're listening to my voice, I would imagine that you're a responsible gun owner. I mean, most folks that I know are responsible gun owners. And, you know, seeing the president go, hey, we need stricter background checks. I'm like, yeah. Like, as a responsible gun owner, I don't mind sitting a day or two to get checked out. Never have. If that means a small percentage of non-responsible gun owners are kept from getting a firearm, then that's worth it to me. It's worth it for everybody to wait a couple days if even one person doesn't get killed. And the, the, the high-powered weapons are always crazy to me. Because, I mean, I guess if I'm making the analogy that I've made many times before, it's like I can drive a car. Like, I drive a car to work, right? Just mm-hmm. a normal car. I can't just go hop in an 18-wheeler and go, you know what? I think now I'm going to drive a semi. Mm. In order to do that, I got to go take a test. I got to be physically capable. I got to be mentally capable. And I think it's kind of the same deal there with guns. Like, if you want a higher-powered weapon, you don't get rid of them. But you need to prove that you have the capabilities to own one, to use one. We got to make sure that people who are mentally ill or are just morons aren't getting them. And I don't think what I'm saying is nutty, actually. I think I feel how most Americans feel. And unless you're a cop, unless you're in the military, unless you're driving around jewels, you shouldn't have armor. Mm -hmm. This dude had body armor just chilling. You shouldn't be able to buy body armor. You out of your mind? A civilian shouldn't be able to just buy armor and go chill up into a club or a Walmart. Like, that's not a thing. And to the people that blanket guns is bad, you're wrong. And to the people saying guns for everyone, you're wrong. And I was, I was looking at uh, Twitter and Facebook yesterday, and 
you know, you'd see a lot of people going, we got to do better. But nobody's doing better. Nobody's, like, trying. You just write words. All right. We got to do better. It falls on deaf ears unless you're doing something about it. I don't even know what that means because you're not saying anything except we got to do better. And so, you know, write what you want, say what you want, but it doesn't mean anything if you're not putting some action behind it. Like, if you want change, you got to vote. You have to volunteer. You have to contribute if that's time or money. And it, it just sucks because apparently compromise is such a bad word now. Like, to compromise, you would think that you're, you're committing the worst possible sin. And so with compromise, I think we should start uh, saying and doing it more. Just watching the weekend. It's, I mean, in, in this, these are two cities that our show's in. And not even that that matters, but I was getting messages going, hey, our show, I'm like, it doesn't matter if our show's in a city or not. This is, these are our people. Like, we should, we should care about our people. And if nothing changes, then nothing's going to change, right? Nothing, if nobody goes, hey, we should make a 9% adjustment. Everything's just going to keep going as is, and people are going to keep getting shot and killed. Um, just the senseless, the senselessness is just so frustrating to me. So to everybody in El Paso, to everybody in Dayton, to everybody in California, I could go back. On and on and on. And again, I say this as a, as a responsible gun owner. I have had guns my entire life. I am not the people going, no guns. As a matter of fact, I, I, I'm a big gun guy. But anyone that I know that's a big gun guy or girl is a responsible big gun guy or girl, and they know there are just some small steps you can take, and it's not going to affect us at all as responsible gun owners. So, again, this is not a political talk. I just feel like it's freaking common sense. Because ain't nobody trying to take guns. Ain't nobody trying to give guns. It's like, hey, we got speed limits for a reason. It's okay to have certain restrictions on things. You can get your car and drive fast, but let's only go 80 here. So we are raising money for the victims. And I feel like that's what, what we can do. And I don't even watch the news right now because more so it's just people screaming at each other about who's right and who's wrong. I'm just over it. I'm over who's right and who's wrong. Like past isn't affecting future because we're doing nothing about the past. We're just talking about it. All right. All right, I'm done. Didn't, didn't plan to go off on, on the little rant there. But to say that I think I speak, like our listeners have given me the platform to be their, their spokesperson. I have a voice. I come from where they come from. I've lived the life that a lot of our listeners are living right now. And I think I speak for the normal folks. And I don't think anybody speaks for normal folks right now. I think you got two, two sides completely dug in, not worrying about normal people. People that are going to work every day. People that want to be able to go to Walmart. People that want to be able to go uh, to a festival. Who, it was tax-free weekend. Are you kidding me? Of course there are a lot of people there. And I'm not going to roll over. I'm not going to take any calls. I'm not getting in a political debate. Because this, this was zero about politics. It's just about, it's just about folks. And, I, sw and I, I swear to you, this, you know, issues like this are going to be what makes me quit this show and, and get in. It's going to be like this. It's not about 98% of the other things. But it's just that, and it's not even the guns part of it. It's just with, in the general scope of life, nobody's compromising or nobody's just talking for the normal people out there. And listen, normal... You know, some would say I'm not, but that's that's in a, in a nutty, peculiar way. Um, I'm not going to play a song, Raimundo. I'm just going to pop out here. But I think that's it. Anything I missed? No. All right. That's good. Thank you. Let me see what we're going to well, do next. Yeah. You could just remind people to go to bobbybones.com. I think you said we ha you had stuff up there, but just that's where to go to support. Yeah. And go vote for my movie quotes while you're at it. <laughs> I'd like yeah, to finally yeah. win one of these. Um, also, Eddie lost his son. We'll talk about that. Yeah. They had to call him, but like, he's lost. And what's purple and on my desk right now that we'll talk about that people mm. are asking. We got all of that. All right. Thank you very much. Back in a second. It's a Bobby Bones show. 